Good morning. Well, good morning. I guess it'd help if I turned the microphone on, wouldn't it? Now, I heard one that blew the horn. Good morning. Can everybody hear me? Thank you. All right. Well, it is good to see everybody with us this morning. Thank the Lord for uh, the day that he's blessed us with. It's a little chilly out here this morning, so I had to wear my overcoat and uh, try to stay warm. I've got my coffee over here. You may see me jump over here and sip it. A little bit of coffee from time to time, but uh, I'm glad that we're able to do this, and thank the Lord uh, that He's blessed us. You know, uh, again, as we said last week, we're so, just so glad that we don't have to close the doors completely to the church, that we have this opportunity to, to come together, and I, I do appreciate that. Um, like I said the last week, the last thing that I really want to do is close the doors of the church, so... I'm so glad that we can gather together, and I'm glad that you're here this morning. I'm glad that uh, that uh, you decided to come out this morning on a, a cold November morning. Well, it's not cold yet, I guess. It's cool to me up here, but um, like I told you last week, I'm not too crazy about the cold. So, uh, But I'm, I'm glad that we are able to come together this morning and uh, just thank God for His blessings and for His mercy for what He has done for us. And I hope that you had a great Thanksgiving. Um, I know that I ate way too much. And uh, I think we uh, went into a food coma there after a while and uh, had to rest it off. But uh, we but, uh, had a good Thanksgiving and I'm so thankful for all that He's done for us. And uh, as I told you last week, I encouraged you last week to... Uh, Go around uh, with your family members and loved ones and tell each other what you are thankful for. And I hope that you did that. I know that we did it at my family and uh, at our gathering, and it was a great blessing. But uh, we've got so much to thank Him for, so much to praise Him for this morning. And just, uh, just thank Him for all that He's done. Uh, this morning we are going to go to the Lord in prayer for just a, a moment before we get started. And we've got a lot to pray about. Uh, I hope that you got my message through the one call system yesterday that uh, letting us know that uh, Brother Ralph Knight had passed away. So uh, be much in prayer for Linda and the family uh, there as they go through this and uh, continue to remember uh, Brother Elbert's family as they are uh, still uh, dealing with that loss. And I know that it's, uh, it's hard and it's going to be tough on them. So do... Do remember these families, and uh, we also have a lot that are sick, and I can't go through all of them, but uh, just want to especially uh, remind you to pray for Brother Delmer. Um, I thought that he was supposed to got out of the hospital, but hadn't talked to him a couple of days, and apparently uh, somebody told me this morning that he was back in the hospital. I don't know uh, for sure, so uh, be much in prayer for Brother Delmer and for uh, for their family and, and uh, give them strength through these times. Uh, let's pray for our nation this morning. Uh, got a lot of problems in our country, but I'm um, still glad to be a part of the greatest country uh, in the world. Uh, we have the freedom to be able to come and worship this morning. So let's pray for our country, pray for our leaders. Uh, let's pray for uh, one another this morning as we go through these times and let's uh, uh, pray for those that are on the front lines of the the coronavirus and the, those that are in the hospitals uh, the nurses the doctors and different ones that has to deal with that uh, let's do remember them as they go through this as well uh, but let's really pray for um, uh, for a, a cure or, or that uh, this coronavirus will uh, ease up, especially through this area. I'm, I'm already, just uh, this being the second service we're doing a drive-in service, I'm already anxious to get back into the church, and I'm anxious to be able to see you. If somebody uh, asked me last week about the service, and they uh, talking about that they really enjoyed it, and I'm, um, I'm glad that they told me because whenever I look out, I see windshields, I, I see reflections, I don't see a whole lot of faces, and it's hard to judge people's reactions to your message whenever you're standing up here like this. And 
So um, I do desire your prayers through this time as well, as, and, I, and I hope that you are, will be blessed uh, through these services. But I'm looking so forward to getting back into the church and having people healthy and uh, able to come together once again. So let's pray for one another this morning. Most of all, let's pray for those that are lost, that the Lord will touch hearts before it's too late. I know that there's a lot of uh, lost people in this community, in this area that needs the Lord's touch. And uh, who knows, maybe uh, somebody might be listening this morning that uh, normally wouldn't be here at church, but they can hear me through the sound system or maybe they uh, flip through on the radio and just in signals distance to be able to hear. We, we don't know, but uh, God's got a purpose. God's got a plan for all things. I truly believe that. So uh, let's pray for those that are lost. Uh, this morning again, uh, pray for us. Pray that the Lord will just continue to strengthen us and give us what we need this morning. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. I ask His blessings upon the service. And, and uh, like I said, you just pray for me and I've been praying for you this morning. Our Heavenly Father, we thank You for this day that You bless us with. Lord, we thank You for the opportunity that You've given to us to be able to gather together in this way. Lord, it might be a little bit different from our normal thing, but... Uh, but you call us to come out of our normal at times and that you call us to uh, do things that are maybe a little bit different that might be a blessing to somebody that we might, no might not normally reach. And Lord, we're able to do this this morning and we're so thankful for that. And we're just uh, pray that you'll use this opportunity, that you'll touch hearts and help those that are in need, those that are hurting right now, those that are sick and afflicted, those that are going through problems and pains and, and, and situations in life. Lord, we just pray that maybe this message might be able to give them strength and give them peace as uh, only you can do this morning. And again, we pray most of all for those that are lost, that you'll help them to come to you before it's everlasting too late. So uh, this morning, again, touch in a mighty way in our church. Help those that are, are going through sicknesses. The, pray for those that are uh, going through loss right now, Lord, that you'll strengthen them and give them the comfort that they need. So again, bless in our church, lead us in your ways. The Lord will give you the praise and glory for it all. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. This morning, if you have your Bibles, and I hope that you do, even in your cars this morning, uh, I want you to turn to John chapter 4 this morning. John chapter 4. And I've been thinking about uh, Christmas coming up, you know, and through, uh, through uh, November, I've been going through uh, a lot of messages about thanks and, and being thanksgiving and uh, uh, being thankful for the things that we've got. And um, then as we transition out of uh, Thanksgiving, I begin to think about Christmas. And I'm not going to preach a Christmas message this morning, not yet. I'll, I'll, I'll hold off on that for maybe another week or two. But um, I thought about as we are going from one season to another, uh, thought about the journeys that we have to make. And uh, um, that word, it seems like, has been resonating in my mind uh, all week long the, about the journeys that we go through and about the things that we have to face. And, and uh, I began to think about the journey that uh, our country is going through with this coronavirus and uh, the things that we're seeing right now. And the, uh, it just seems like it, it's so tough at times going through the journey. And sometimes we got, get wearied in the journey and I began to think about that there was even a time whenever Jesus got weary in the journey, didn't he? I thought about in John chapter 4 and I'll read uh, through verse 10. It says, When therefore the Lord knew how the, uh, how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples... He left Judea and departed again into Galilee, and he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his sons, Joseph. 
Now, jo now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water, and Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy me. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. And Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith unto thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given the living water. And this morning I want to preach a message being weary on the journey. And as we look at this, it said that Jesus was traveling and he was going from Judea to Galilee. And, and uh, this today, you know, in modern day, in modern times, this would have been uh, a, a fairly a simple drive for us or maybe get in the airplane and, and fly from one city to the other, you know, it wouldn't have been very much, but you have to remember that in these times that most of their traveling happened by foot. They walked the way, uh, the whole way that they would go most of the times. Occasionally they might have a, a horse or a donkey or something that they would ride on, but it, most of the time what they would do is they walked from one place to the other. And this was a long distance. And this wasn't just like uh, me walking from the church uh, down to my house, which is a mile and a half away. You know, this was, wasn't a, a, a simple little stroll through the park. This was a long journey. And this journey that it would have took going from Judea to Galilee, uh, some scholars say that it would have taken anywhere between six days at the minimum up to two weeks depending on the, the way that they went and the, the direction that they went and the weather and the, the, how fast that they uh, wanted to, to travel or, and you know all of the, the different things. But it would have been at the minimum six days to go from Judea to Galilee. And on that way, as they traveled from Judea to Galilee, they had to go through Samaria. Now, there was a way that they could have went around. And believe it or not, most uh, Jewish people would, uh, uh, would rather have went around Samaria and, and went uh, uh, try to get away from Samaria completely. But Jesus... It said there in verse 4, he must needs go through Samaria. Now that's very important. I want you to remember that. He didn't have to go through Samaria. But here it said he must needs go through Samaria. So as he was going and he went in that direction and he went, it had to have been at least three days that he had been traveling by foot. Now you think about how long that they would have been. Uh, most scholars say that they would have traveled about uh, possibly up to 20 miles per day. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not prepared to make a journey for 20 miles every day. Uh, you'd have to be in really good shape, and I'm not in that shape this morning. I, I, I tell people I'm in a shape. Yeah, I'm, I've got a shape. I'm round, but uh, I'm not in that shape to be able to, to walk that distance. It, I'll just be honest with you. To me, it'd be hard for me to walk this mile and a half up to my house, but I'd do it if I had to. But, um, but here Jesus had been traveling for these three days, probably at least 60 miles or so, that he had been traveling from, uh, from Judea and got into Samaria at this point in time. So yes, Traveling that long, walking that distance, and the, the season and the heat and the, the different things, it was wearisome. It was tiresome, even on Jesus. And we have to remember, a lot of times we don't think about what Jesus went through, do we? We don't think about His human side that He had. Now, Jesus was 100% God, but He was also 100% man. 
He came to this world in the flesh and He took on the pains and the sufferings and the heartaches that we suffer through today even. And He, he felt the, the agony. He felt the, the, the problems. And He felt the pains that, that other people that we would feel today. I, I go back and I think about you know, we've suffered loss here in the church in the, the past month. And it's uh, we think about how hard that it is and the, the, the suffering. And we're sorrowful for, uh, for the families. And we're sorrowful that we have that loss uh, this morning. But, you know, even Jesus went through that same loss, didn't He? Whenever His uh, friend Lazarus had died and He went to the graveside and, and uh, he, he went to that graveside and He wept there. At the graveside. So Jesus knew those pains. He knew what we go through today. And he knew the the tire the, the tiresome journey. He knew the, the, the problems that he had to face. He, he knew all these. He th felt all of these things. So yes, here as we see Jesus in chapter four of John, we know that he was tired. That he was wore out. He had traveled and traveled and traveled and gone and gone. And there was a point whenever he needed to rest. And going through Samaria, though, this was different. Like I said a minute ago, he didn't have to. He could have went around and it would have made the journey even harder because they'd have had to go up over mountains and go over up over hills. Uh, they would have had to go around a longer distance. But here he had to go through Samaria, as it said there, he must needs go through. And there was a reason for it. And I'm glad that there was a reason for it. And I'm glad that, that the Lord saw a need. If the only reason that he had for going through Samaria was to get to this woman that was by the well, that was what he went for. If that was the only reason, if that was the only thing that he cared about, about get going through Samaria, he wanted to get to that woman. Now, what was the significance of Samaria? What was the significance of this? Well, I thought about as I studied into it, and I've known this, but it, uh, the writers on one of the sites that I saw made it much clearer than I could probably do, but talked about the Samaritans and it said that these were the descendants of the Israelites of the northern kingdom who had intermarried with foreign settlers after the fall of Samaria in 722 BC. As a result of the, uh, this racial intermarriage, they were no longer considered to be truly Jewish and were hated by most Jews. The Samaritans continued to worship as the Jews did, but took only the first five books of the Old Testament as their spiritual authority. They built a rival temple on Mount Gerizim, which they believed to be the site of the altar where Abraham prepared to offer his son Isaac as a sacrifice. So we look at this and we know that uh, we, we wonder why that the Jewish people and why the Israelites hated the Samaritans so much. This was, this was the reason. And it was all because of prejudice. It was all because the, uh, the Samaritans had married in and, and had that uh, uh, mixed marriages there. And, and the Jewish people didn't like that. The, the, the ones, now you got to remember, now this was... Um, to, to be a Jew that they would marry within uh, that family of Jews and they would, um, uh, they would not go outside uh, of that belief system. And it had nothing to do with skin color, by the way. Uh, if you go over and you looked at the Samaritans and you looked at the, uh, the Jewish people, you would not have found any, much difference, if any difference, in their skin color. It had nothing to do with that. What it had to do with uh, was their belief systems and how that they believed and what they believed and, and, uh, and what they had done and their, their, the purity of that lineage from the Jewish line. And the Jews wanted to keep that purity continuing on and to, to uh, go on uh, throughout time. 
But here it was, the Samaritans didn't do that. The, the Samaritans had intermarried with other belief systems, with people who had other gods and had other religions, and that was what caused the problems. Like I said, it had nothing to do with their skin color. It was with their religion, with their belief systems that they had. So as we look at that and we see that the, the Jewish people had nothing to do with Samaritan people. They, uh, they wouldn't touch each other. They wouldn't uh, talk to each other. They wouldn't socialize with each other. Uh, they completely stayed away at a distance. As a matter of fact, whenever somebody would go through, a Jewish person would go through Samaria. And whenever they would come out of Samaria, before they would go into their homeland again into Israel, they would stop and they would shake the dust off of their feet so that they would not carry the dust of Samaria into their country. That was how prejudiced that they were. That was how, uh, how hard that they were on what they believed. And they would shake the dust off. And that's we, we get that out of the Bible whenever the Jesus sent the disciples out and whenever people wouldn't receive them. You know, he told them, shake the dust off of your feet for a testimony against them. And this was basically what they were doing as they would come uh, into their homeland. They would shake that dust off as a testimony that we're not going to have anything to do with you all. That we're separated. So here it was, though, Jesus, being a Jew, said that he must needs go through Samaria. There was a reason. There was a purpose. I don't believe in coincidences today, church. I don't believe that it was a coincidence that Jesus went through Samaria. I believe that he looked ahead. He knew that there was a meeting that was set. I believe that, that God set up a time. I believe that God set up a date. That God set up everything to be right in order. He knew exactly where he was going. He went into that place knowing. But that woman didn't know, did she? That woman didn't have any clue about the meeting that she was going to come to. But here it was. Uh, she met up with this man. And as Jesus rested there, in verse 6, it said, Now Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. So here we see that Jesus, being wearied and, and wore out and tired from that journey, sat down and wanted some water and that's all that he asked for was a drink of water now this would have been a, a fairly simple thing we would think to be able to do but it really wasn't we we think today we can go to the faucet and we can uh, uh, get what we want and we can get out the water and uh, the sodas and uh, uh, coffee this morning we can get whatever we want you know and it seems like it's fairly easy for us uh, but it wasn't so easy for these days and these times because there was a well that was there and it wasn't like just turning on a spigot. They had to get the water out of the well and there was some effort that had to be put into it. So as the, the woman knew this effort that was going to have to come and here it was, this, she knew that this man that was in front of her was a Jew and she asked the question, in verse 9 said, Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, ask a drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews had no dealings with the Samaritans. And this again, this was because of that prejudice that they had. And this woman understood that and she knew that and she asked the question instead of, uh, just going ahead and giving water instead of just uh, going ahead and, and doing this. She had prejudice in herself as well. And she asked him, said, well, who do you think that you are, in other words? Who, who are you that you would ask me of some water? So you, 
Are you crazy? I, I can just imagine her thinking these things about Jesus. You know, who, who are you that you would do this and ask of this from me? And it would have been easy. And it's easy for us to have the same hesitations, isn't it? Whenever somebody asks something of us or whenever uh, asks us a favor or asks something about us, we have hesitations even if it's among family members, don't we? Let alone strangers or so-called enemies. Uh, but here it was, Jesus didn't have the same hesitations that the woman did. This woman hesitated because she knew from a, probably from a small girl, she knew the dealings that the Jews and the, the Samaritans would have with each other or how that they would stay apart from each other. And she'd probably been taught all of her life, don't talk to them, don't touch them, don't, don't look at them, stay completely away from them. And now this Jew was sitting in front of her asking for a drink of water. And she was not willing to give it. I wonder today how many of us, as we look around and we think about the world and the shape that this world is in, and I wonder how many people are rejecting Jesus today. How many people uh, uh, would, would not give Jesus the time of day uh, to be able to talk to Him, be able to, to witness or be able to, to converse with Him and uh, thinking that, well, there's nothing to it. I thought about, uh, as I was flipping through Facebook, um, I believe it was yesterday, I was uh, looking in somebody, um, well, one of the advertisements on it, which I closed off of the advertisement, said I didn't want to see it anymore, but... Uh, one of the advertisements was a, a t-shirt and on the t-shirt it said the, the um, uh, evolution of uh, fairy tale I believe was what it was and it had at the beginning you know had a little child talking about uh, thank you Easter Bunny you know and then it had somebody uh, another one a little bit older thank you Santa Claus and then it had another one uh, thank you, God. And they said that that was the evolution of a fairy tale. And boy, I'm just, I'll just be honest with you. My blood run bull. Uh, uh, it started bulling. I did not like it at all. Because it's not just a fairy tale. It's not just something that is made believe. It wasn't just something that was made up. There's a history that goes back and you can prove that there is evidence of Jesus. And we know that there is evidence of His resurrection. There was many that saw Jesus after the resurrection. And we, we know that it's more than a fairy tale this morning. We know that it's, it's more than just a story this morning. And I'm so glad that it is. But, but here... How many people today think that same thing? Think that it's just made up. It's, uh, uh, I've heard people say that, well, people made up God. God didn't make people. No, they've got it wrong. There's a lot of people that are mistaken this morning. There's a lot of people that are confused. and There's a lot of people who have that prejudice down inside of them that would not give Jesus the time of day to talk to them. Or to speak to them. This woman was in the same shape. She was in the same way. She didn't want to give Jesus the time of day. Let alone give him a drink of water. But Jesus. Jesus didn't feel the same way. He didn't have the same prejudices. He didn't have the same hesitations as the woman had. In verse 10. Jesus said. Answered and said to her. If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that said to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Amen. Living water. Not just the, the water that she was going to give, you know, the woman that, uh, that was going to, or could have possibly gave Jesus a glass of water. That water would have went away in the heat of the day you got to remember this was about the sixth hour as verse uh, six says 
This was about the sixth hour. And what that was in the, the Jewish time frame, now that would have been about noontime. So it was pretty warm. It was hot. And one glass of water would have got you through a little while. But well, you've been thirsty again. As I got up this morning and I ate my breakfast and I always drink me a, a glass of water after my breakfast and everything. But, but you know what? I'm thirsty again. And it doesn't last that long. And we, we uh, have that desire, that, that need that we want more and we want more and we want more. But here Jesus was going to offer what was offering her living water that she'd never thirst again. Now imagine that. And he wasn't talking about a water for a thirst. He was, he was talking about that spiritual thirst that she had. He was talking about that need that she had that was greater than that physical thirst that she had in her life. He was talking about that spiritual thirst, that spiritual need that, that she needed to be filled up. Listen, there's so many people this morning that are looking, that are needing to be filled up with something and they're going after the wrong things. They're going after the, 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 the wrong drinks. They're going after the wrong drugs. They're going after the wrong uh, uh, things to try to fill them up in their life. And listen, there's nothing that will ever fill you up in your life except for Jesus Christ. He's the only one. They can give you that need this morning that you have been desiring for so long that if you've been empty and waiting for something to fill you up, Jesus is the one that can give you that living water spiritually this morning that you'll never thirst again. Lord God, I'm glad this morning that about 30 years ago, something changed in my life and in my heart and He put something down inside of me and I've never wanted to go back to the old bottle anymore. I never wanted to go back to the old ways anymore. I've, there's been a change made in me because of what Jesus has given to me this morning. And I'm so glad for that this morning. I'm so thankful for what he's done for me. Hallelujah. Woo. So we see that this woman was offered the living water. He told her, he said, if thou knewest the gift of God. See this woman, she was a Samaritan. They, they worshiped God and they thought that they knew God's will. But she, she thought that she knew God. But Jesus tells her plainly, he said, If thou knewest the gift of God, that that He freely gives, it would make a change in your life. He tells her, said, If you only knew who it is that saith unto thee, Give me the drink, it would change your life forever. And He said, and he would have given thee living water. I'm glad this morning that he's still offering it. Even though that it's 2,000 years later, I'm glad that he still offers it to you and to me. That living water that we could have that would, would bless and that would strengthen that would has been extended to us even today that, that we could have this great blessing and we could be filled this morning spiritually. But we've got to want it. What the woman needed was right there in front of her. But she had a choice to make. You know, a lot of people today don't believe in choices. They believe that God gives you or God doesn't give you. But I believe that God gives us a choice. And this woman had a choice right here. That she could take the living water or she could walk away. In the prejudice and the hatred that she had for the Jewish people. And she would have walked away empty. But instead of doing that, Jesus, whenever He said this, it piqued her interest. So what is this living water? She first told us, said, uh, if you go on through in, in verse 11, it said, then the woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou the living water? She was still thinking about that water that was in that well that was 
would be dry and thirsty in just a moment, in just a few hours again. She was still thinking about that. And she was asking Jesus, okay, we'll get past the Jewish and the Samaritan part right now. We'll, we'll get completely past this because now you've offered me something. But if we're going to get past that part, how are you going to accomplish this that you said that you could do? The well's deep. Uh, the, the, there's, there's water in there, but it's deep and you don't have anything to draw with. So how is it that you're going to do this? And she asked him the question, said, Art thou greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank thereof himself and the children and his cattle? Oh, if she only knew. And it goes back in to verse 10 again, where Jesus asked her, said, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that sent thee, or asked the saith unto thee, Give me to drink. If she would have only knew, she would have understood and realized that yes, Jesus was greater than Abraham. He was greater than Jacob. So much greater. He was the Son of God. So Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But... Whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Amen. I'm glad this morning that we have that hope. I'm glad that we have that promise. I'm glad that we have that peace this morning knowing that God is able to give us that that we truly need even whenever we didn't think that we needed. Remember, this woman came to the well thinking she needed water out of that well. She wasn't thinking about needing living water. She didn't even realize that she, didn't, that, that she needed the living water. But Jesus... In His love and in His mercy, extended that out to her and said, I will give, uh, shall be in Him a well of living, uh, excuse me, a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Then she got it. Then she I think and it finally clicked in her and she finally realized and she said in verse 15, the woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. This morning what people need more than anything, more than a vaccine for the, the coronavirus, more than the, uh, the money from a stimulus check, more than, uh, more than uh, anything that we could have in this world, the thing that we need more than anything in this world is that we could come to Jesus and have that living water. There's a world out there that's thirsty, church. Let's take Jesus to them. There's a world out there that's in need this morning. Let's take Jesus to them. There's plenty available. Isaiah 12 verse 2 says, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. Therefore with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. I'm glad that there's those wells of salvation that we can draw out of this morning because of what Jesus Christ did for you and for me. Isaiah 44 verse 3 says, For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground i will pour my spirit upon the seed and my blessings upon thine offering this morning i believe this morning that jesus wants to pour out that living water upon us this morning but just as this samaritan woman was she had to have that desire. She had to have that want, that, that, that 
Something had to click that she would want this. And church, as we look and we think about the lost people, or you may be here this morning, you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior this morning. You may not know about, you don't have this living water inside of you this morning. This morning would be the perfect time to allow Jesus to pour out His Spirit upon you and give you that living water. Knowing that there's a better place to go Church, you know, a lot of people thinks about uh, going to heaven. And we'll talk about all the things that's going to be in heaven. And, and that's all well and good. And a lot of people will talk about the streets of gold. I like, I like to think about the things that won't be there most of the time. There'll be no more sin. There'll be no more sorrow. There'll be no more heartaches. There'll be no more troubles and trials and strife. And, and there'll be no more death. And there'll be no more pain. None of these things will be there. What, what a day that that will be that we'll be, get to enter into that place. But my mind, whenever I imagine what heaven will look like, I can't get past that stream of the water, the river of life that is flowing. Boy, what a sight that, that would be to behold. And one of these days, if the Lord has blessed you and you are saved this morning, you're born again, you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior this morning, then one of these days you'll get to see that river of life. And well, what a day that that'll be. But this morning, if you're lost and you don't know Him in the free pardon of sin, you'll never see that. You'll stand before a just and an almighty God and give an account of the things that you've done in your body, whether they be good or whether they be evil. You'll give an account for those things. And if you're lost and you've not accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, then in hell you'll lift up your eyes. And how sad that that would be. Church, I don't want anybody to die and go to hell this morning. If you're here and you're lost this morning and you don't have the hope of Jesus Christ in your life, I do not want to see you die and go to hell this morning. I want to see you whenever we make it up into heaven and we get to, to look over that river of life. I want to see you there. But this morning, that's your choice. Just as the woman here the, at the well had that choice whether she would accept this water that Jesus was going to give, that living water, you have that choice this morning to make. Are you going to accept His gift? Or are you going to reject it this morning? This morning, I'd like for every head to be bowed this morning, every eye closed, even in your cars this morning or at home, uh, watching on Facebook, or I want you to examine yourself. And this morning, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, if you have not been given that living water, I beg you this morning to ask Jesus for that living water, just as this Samaritan woman did. Ask Him for that and ask Him to flood your spirit, flood your soul with that living water, that hope that we have and knowing that there's a better place to go to. And as you examine yourself, please ask Him for that living water. Ask Him for salvation this morning. Ask Him for that hope that He can only give this morning. Let's pray this morning. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, I don't know the hearts of the people that are listening under the sound of my voice this morning, but I'm glad that you do. And I know that you have a reason and a purpose for all things. Lord, there was a reason and a purpose why that you went through Samaria whenever you didn't have to. Lord, I know that there's a reason why that we are gathered together in the parking lot this morning to, to have service this morning instead of going into the church house. We could have went into the church house this morning, but there's a reason and there's a purpose for all things. And I 
pray that you'll touch hearts through this. And Lord, if there's one here that's lost this morning and don't know you in a free pardon of sin, Lord, I pray that you'll touch in their hearts and give them that living water that they need that'll fill up their souls, that'll fill up their spirit, that'll help them understand that there is a better place to go. And Lord, the journey's going to be weary. It's not going to be easy at times, but Lord, we're going to need that living water to help us keep going and to be strengthened and to be blessed. So again, we pray that you'll guide us in those things, Lord. Lord, and that you'll lead us. Again, Lord, we pray and we beg you, Lord, save those that are lost. Touch them and help them to come to you before it's too late. We pray that you'll bless our church. Help us to be that that you'd have us to be, Lord, that we can lead others to you, Lord. Lord, we give you the praise and the glory for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen.